Using our sense of touch and feeling, we can describe everything that we see around us. Like for example, this glass of water. You can hold a glass in your hand, but can you hold the water? No, you can't. Mm. But if you try to blow, if you try to blow air in your hand, do you feel something in your hand? Mm. But can you see it or hold it? Now the glass, the water, and the air feel different. This is because they exist in three different forms. Now, would you like to know these three different forms? Well then, now come and join me in another fun and learning activity with me, Teacher Danny. material around us have special characteristics. Some have different colors, some have recognizable shapes, but some do not have shapes. <laughs> some have a smooth or rough texture, but some cannot be seen, but we can feel them. Now they occupy space and we can measure their mass and weight and their volume are observable and can be measured. Now, most of the things that we see and touch, like this ice cream, are what we call matter. But what is matter? Now, to help us with our lesson today, we invited a very beautiful and talented science teacher <laughs> who is also a friend of mine. Now, her phone is ringing already. Hello, Teacher Manji, and welcome to our fun and learning vlog with energy! <laughs> hello, kids! Hello, everyone! And hello, Teacher Danny! How are you today? I am good, Teacher. And how about you, kids? Excellent! <laughs> teacher Dan, I'm very glad to be part of this fun and learning vlog. And I hope I could share my knowledge to young children who are watching. Hello, kids! I know how busy you are these past few days, but you still accepted our invitation. Thank you very much, teacher. Now, what did you prepare today? Yes, teacher Danny, I'm busy making my modules for my learners, and I prepared... Ice cream. Oh, I also have ice cream here. Don't be sad, teacher. I'll send one after this lesson. So, hey, kids, I have a question for you. Do you still remember the reason why things freeze or melt? Well, that's a good question, teacher. Because I was telling these kids a while ago about the different characteristics of materials. And I know how knowledgeable you are of this topic. That's why I'll just eat here and listen to you. Take it away, teacher! <laughs> Things around you have different shapes, sizes, colors, and smells. And they are all alike in one way. They are all kinds of matter. Now, we will explore the three states of matter. Solid liquid gas, solid liquid gas, Three states of matter, solid liquid gas. Yes, you are correct. The first state of matter is solid. And a solid takes up a certain amount of space and it has recognizable shapes. Most of the things you see are solids. A solid keeps its shape. Some hard, some can break. Like a table or roll of tape, a solid gives its shape. Now to learn more about solids, watch this. Solids have a definite shape and occupy a definite space. The molecules of a solid substance 
are packed together very tightly. This means that the intermolecular space between the molecules is very less. As the space around each molecule is very less, molecules of a solid cannot move around freely. Thus, the tight arrangement of molecules in a solid substance gives a solid its definite shape. Ice, wood, stone, chair, table, wall, brick are examples of solids. Solids are hard, strong and rigid materials because the molecules are tightly packed. Because of the strong intermolecular forces, solids have definite size, shape and volume. Since the molecules in solids do not have free movement, they cannot flow. The solids cannot be compressed appreciably. Whoa, that was solid. What could be the next state of matter? Number two. Yes, that is true. Number two is liquid. And liquid also takes up a certain amount of space. However, it does not keep its shape. A liquid takes the shape of the thing that holds it. A liquid shape depends on the container that it's in. Like a cup or metal tin, a liquid shape depends. Now here's additional information about liquids. Coming to liquids, we can see that they occupy a definite space, but they don't have any fixed shape. The molecules of a liquid substance are quite close to each other but have a considerable amount of intermolecular space between them. This space is more than the space present between the molecules of a solid substance. If a block of ice is heated, the space between its molecules increases, thereby causing it to change into water. Water, oil, milk, kerosene, petrol, Diesel are examples of liquids. Because of the weak intermolecular forces, liquids have no definite shape of their own. They take the shape of the containers. Liquids have a definite volume. Liquids can flow from a higher to a lower level. If liquids like water are most fluid, how about our third state of matter? Number 3 ah! Yes, you are right. It's a gas. And a gas, like the liquid, does not keep its shape. Unlike liquid, a gas spreads out to fill different amounts of space. A gas you cannot see. It's in the air we breathe. Helium, oxygen, or steam, a gas you cannot see. In order to know the different properties and characteristics of gases, we have to reveal our secret formula to become tiny like the particles of gases in 3, 2, 1. A gaseous substance has no fixed shape and the space occupied by it also changes depending upon the container in which it is put. Hydrogen, Oxygen, Carbon Dioxide, Nitrogen, Helium, Argon are examples of gases. There is a lot of intermolecular space between the molecules. The molecules are far off from each other and free to move about in the available space. When water is heated, the space between the water molecules increases and water changes from its liquid to its gaseous state. So you can see how the states of matter differ from each other because of 
the arrangement of molecules in them. <laughs> that was <laughs> fun. <laughs> now, in order to compare the three states of matter, here's a simple experiment just for you. But please, do not play any materials like matchsticks which may cause fire. Alright? Marbles, transparent glasses, water in a jug, bowls, a lid, and camphor tablets. Let us start by putting the marbles in the glass. You can see that there is no change in the shape or size of the marbles when you put it in the glass. Now take another glass and pour some water in it. Now pour out the water in another glass. You see, the water has retained its volume, but the shape of the water has changed. Now carefully burn a few camphor tablets and capture the smoke arising out of it in another glass. You can see that the gas in this glass expands and moves up to occupy the glass without retaining any shape or size. Place a lid over it. You can see that the gas in this glass expands and moves up to occupy the glass without retaining any shape or size. Now take these marbles and put it into different shaped bowl, like this. Again, there is no change in the shape or size of the marbles, even when the container is changed. You can pour the water out into another bowl. Can you see the water has taken the shape of the bowl now? This shows that liquids do not retain their shape. Now let us try pouring the smoke into a bowl. But gases do not have a definite shape or size and they do not settle. So it just expands to fit the space available. Over here, when we remove this lid, the gas inside it spreads to the entire room. A few moments later. Now let's go back to the ice cream. Why does our ice cream become solid when we put them in the freezer? And why do they melt? after some time not being refrigerated can you answer that teacher banji matter gains energy when it is heated this can change its state if a solid is heated enough it will melt this means that the solid turns into a liquid just like the water ice is a water in a solid state but what will happen when the liquid is heated we can ask teacher Danny about that. When liquids are heated, kids, matter in liquid state will turn into gases. Just like for example, when we try to boil water. After some time, when the water reaches its boiling point, the water starts to evaporate. Now, steam will come out after evaporation. It means that the liquid state turns into a gas. What about when matter loses energy? Matter can also lose energy. If matter loses enough heat, it may change its state. For liquids, they will freeze if they lose enough heat energy. This means that the liquid changes into a solid. A gas will condense if it loses enough heat energy. This means that the gas changes to a liquid. This is what will happen when gases condenses. If a solid directly turns into gas, that is sublimation now. Did you know that I also prepared a clip just for the kids? Watch this! On Earth, materials exist in one of three main states of matter. Solid, liquid, or gas. Materials can change between these states. When a state change occurs, the substance's property will also change. Maybe not too surprising. However, if the state change is reversed, the substance will recover the properties it had to begin with. Neat. Matter can transition between the three states when heated or cooled. But why is heat key in all of this? When a material is heated, it absorbs heat energy. This additional energy can cause attractive forces between molecules to break. This leads to rearrangements of the particles because the attractive forces no longer hold them together as tightly. 
The same happens when a liquid is heated. The attractive forces between the molecules break, leading them to become more widely dispersed and a gas to form. These four words describe changes in state. Do you know which word refers to which change? Pause the video, fill in the gaps and click play when you're ready. Did you get them right? Do you know the difference between evaporation and boiling? Both are when a substance transforms from a liquid to a gas. Think of a boiling pan of water, all of the water bubbles. This is because all of the particles have enough energy to become gaseous. But water standing in a pan that is not being heated by anything other than the environment can also turn into a gas. This is evaporation. Only the particles at the surface have enough energy to change from a liquid to a gas. Hence, evaporation is a slower process than boiling, even though it achieves the same state change. Both are types of vaporization. The opposite of these vaporization processes is, is condensation, the transition from a gas to a liquid. Think of a cold can of soda on a hot day. Those water droplets on the outside, or the dew on the grass in the morning, or the steamed up mirror after a hot bath, even the clouds in the sky, or a foggy windscreen in a car. These are all examples of condensation. Water vapor in the air has cooled down to form liquid droplets of water. Now let's think about the transitions between solids and liquids, so melting and freezing. Think of the Arctic sea ice. In the summer, when air temperatures are warmer, more heat energy is absorbed by the ice. This causes bonds to break between the ice's water molecules and the ice starts to melt. The solid ice becomes liquid water. But in the winter, the air temperatures are colder, and so seawater freezes, and the ice starts to form again. There is less heat energy within the ice, and so more bonds can form, holding it together as solid ice. So far, so good. But did you know that sometimes, when solids are heated, they can turn straight into gases? This is called sublimation. This is only demonstrated by particular materials such as solid carbon dioxide, also known as dry ice. When subjected to a certain pressure, it will turn straight into gaseous carbon dioxide. Liquid carbon dioxide does exist, but it only occurs under very high pressures. Similarly, gases can turn straight into solids when cooled. This is called deposition. Let's check out how much you remember about the changes of state. Pause the video and fill in the blanks. Did you remember them all? What? <laughs> so kids, let us not forget that all the things around us are matter. And the three states are... Solid, liquid, gas. Solid, liquid, gas. The three states of matter are solid, liquid, gas. Thank you so much, Teacher Danny, for this opportunity. And I hope I shared information to young children. Bye! Now, matter is really fun and exciting to learn. That must be 30 for the years. <laughs> Thank you very much, Teacher Bungie, for this fun and learning activity. <laughs> Thank you for spending time with us. Now, here's a question that I will leave before saying goodbye. Why is it important to know about the different states of matter? Comment your answers below. Now, thank you very much, kids, for another fun-filled learning activity with me, Teacher Danny, Teacher Banji. Thank you also to Teacher Clarissa for making this very beautiful uh, text for, for our learning club. And now, it's time for us to say goodbye! <laughs> goodbye! <laughs>